Hey everybody, and welcome to the recording of the Johnson Street Reach Conference 2022. If we want to be intentional with our time during the week, then we need to be sure to recharge ourselves with quality time with God. You're about to hear from Andrew and Jordan Lacombe as they share with us how they intentionally map out quality time with God. So without further hesitation, let's jump right in and listen to what Andrew and Jordan have to say. Well, thanks for joining our class. Uh, we obviously are not, um, well, she's a teacher, but not necessarily in this not this kind yeah you guys are a little older than first graders um, which is good and then I sit in a desk at a desk by myself all day so uh, get, we'll uh, we'll be dancing up here because we're nervous and all that fun stuff but um, it'll be good uh, my name is Andrew Lacombe this is my wife Jordan uh, obviously she teaches first grade and I work at a desk um, so today we're going to kind of jump into the topic of recharge um, I'll kind of go into the math because I like math uh, for the accountants in the room, we like some math, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so th- the church is talking about one one one. So how we spend our one eleven. Um, and if you're the typical American, you've got twenty four hours in a day, just like every other typical non American. Um, if you sleep for eight hours a day, seven days a week, um, then you're left with one hundred and twelve hours of awake hours in the week. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I don't quite get eight hours, but we'll we'll go with that. So 112, and then the one hour that you spend in church on Sundays, subtract that from your 112, there's your 111. And so we're talking about across the church of what are we doing with that 111 um, to impact the kingdom. There's there's some other really cool classes. Our class is talking about how we're recharging um, and what we're doing to be intentional to make ourselves better. So... um one of the things that we have like made to be very important in our marriage and just in our lives is to spend that time recharging in the word. <clears throat> and that's something that when we first got married, we've been married what, almost 12 almost, years. No. Oh, that's what he always says. Six. Years. It's been 12 years. Oh. No, almost seven years. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so we didn't start out this way. We've, you know, learned and grown and, um, now I feel like we've kind of got a really good setup and a good system for how we set up our day each day and our daily routine to <clears throat> make sure we're spending quality time in the Word every day. So um, as we dive into that, what do y'all think? Why are some reasons that we study the Bible? To increase our knowledge. <clears throat> yeah, increase knowledge. Yep. What else? Understand what God has to say about us personally, individually, for what he wants in our life. Yeah, absolutely. And to, you can't share if you don't know what you're sharing. <laughs> yes, very true. Very true. Stay focused. Stay focused, yep. What else? Bring about change in, our, in ourselves. Reveal to us areas that need, we need to work on. Yeah. <coughs> Comfort. Comfort, yep. Absolutely. I started to look at it as, like, you want a relationship with God, right? And so that's one of the ways he talks to you, and that's the way we build relationships with each other is talking. Mm-hmm. And so, Andrew, if I want to be your friend, but we never talked, then how can I expect us to be friends and get closer? Right. Um, so why not talk with Jesus through that? <coughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. So some things that we came up with when we were thinking about this question is um, that we study because we want to learn about God. And we want to learn what he loves because we want to love the same things that he loves. Um, And we want to be able to share with others. And like Sue said, we can't know what to share if we don't know about God or know his story. Um, And we just want to know who God is. So what are some barriers that you can think of that keep you from studying the Bible or keep you from having a quiet time or priority time with the Lord each day? Well, there's a, a book called the Screw Tape Letters. Mm-hmm. And I think it said it better than anything else. <coughs> distractions. The world says, the devil, when he wants to, to make you, if, if you're sitting down to study the Bible, the devil just makes you hungry. <laughs> so you go get something to eat instead. I mean, there's just any number of distractions <coughs> that seem important. Yeah. 
For me, it's thinking of it as something I should do, and I'm really good at avoiding things I think I should do. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to change my mindset. <coughs> yep. Mm -hmm. and, and Obligation. Friends of mine, years ago they had uh, kids who were in sports and things, and they said, you know, they remembered when <coughs> schools didn't schedule things on Wednesday night because it was a church. So you didn't schedule stuff, but now they do. And then and, and Sunday afternoons, they, they have to go out of town to play soccer in Midland or something, and so they miss church to drive there. Yeah. And she said, it's just a shame that that, the, that happens now. And I said, well, that happens because you do go out of town mm -hmm. on Wednesday night. It. If nobody yeah. did, if everybody went to church instead, they wouldn't schedule the stuff. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Growing up, we were not allowed to play soccer because soccer was always Wednesdays and Sundays. And so we, I think Jansen would have been great at soccer, but he never had the opportunity because it was on church days. So, yeah. Yep. It's a big one. Yep. What else? What are some other barriers? <coughs> I think our perception of time. We always say, I don't have time. I don't have time. Yeah. Time. Big time. That's, per that's our perception. Mm -hmm. we all have it's more like we hours. don't make time. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. What else? Sometimes we may not like what it is we see when we're in there. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's a big one. That's a big one. God uh, put some stuff on our hearts for sure. Good morning. Yep. Yeah. So we came up with those same kind of answers, lack of time, lack of motivation. Um, <clears throat> and then something that we personally felt like was a barrier to us when we first were getting started is that we didn't understand. Like we would read it and we would study it, but it didn't really make sense. Um, <clears throat> and we didn't know what to study or where to start. And so those were barriers for us as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah. But we're going to talk about a survey. Yeah. So, uh, well, first thing we'll kind of go through this real quick um, is, you know, we talk about time. You know, we have 111 hours essentially. Um, what are we doing with that time? Everyone across the entire world has the same amount of time. It's one of those things where you can't go back and go get some more. We're all given the exact same amount of time. So, <clears throat> um, in the timing of things, you know, we talked about you got to make time, you got to set time, set that priority time, that whatever that is, um, because uh, if the average reader in the United States, based on how many minutes they can read in a or words per minute, mm -hmm. the average time. If you wanted to sit down and read the Bible, I'm not an average reader, I'm a little bit below average. <laughs> She's a little bit above average, but together <laughs> we're average. Um, so the average, the average reading time, if you wanted to read the entire Bible cover to cover, if, if you wanted to do it in two years, it would take six minutes a day of reading. And after six minutes you stop, pick up the next day, six minutes, six minutes. So obviously if you wanted to do it in a year, it's 12 minutes. Um, if you wanted to do it entirely in six months, it's about 24, 25 minutes. Three months is 50 minutes, that's a day. And if you want to read the whole Bible in one month, it would take you basically two and a half hours a day of reading the Bible. On average, Americans watch two hours and three minutes of social media every day um, and four hours of TV. So some of those overlap. But essentially, if you're watching four hours of TV a day, and if you took just two and a half of those hours and read your Bible, you could be done. Um, the whole thing. The whole Entire Bible. Thing. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, and that's one thing that uh, we'll, we'll well, kind of get a little bit more. True. True. Yeah. Right. So we're going to get to that, actually. Yeah. But yeah, so that, that's just kind of, you know, people say, well, I don't have time. I don't have time to read the Bible or, you know, I'm just so busy. Um, in 12 minutes a day, you can read the Bible in a year. If you just take 12 minutes while you're drinking your coffee or waking up in the morning, um, and we'll kind of go into some other resources, but there are resources where you can listen to the Bible um, and just get the word going in your brain and just working and kind of helping build you up. Um, and so there was a, there's an analogy of, um, we don't have it, but basically if you think, we'll use our imagination. Um, and if you have a jar, and that jar is your day, it's 24 hours and you start filling that jar with whatever it is, uh, and the, in this analogy it was beans, it was pinto beans, but you fill that jar with all the stuff that you're doing, um, whether you know sleeping, breakfast, work, 
working out, school, whatever it is, uh, watching TV, and then your day fills up, and then it's over, you dump it out, and you start over. Um, well, each of, if you are just thinking to yourself, okay, well, I'll, I'll get to the Bible eventually, or I'll get to my quiet time, my quality time eventually, a lot of times that bucket fills up, and then there's no time left. So you have to set a time, whether it's in the morning, whether it's at lunch, whether it's you know, your 15 minute break at school or work, whatever it is, um, you have to set it and make it a routine. Um, so that kind of just leads into you know, routines. Um, we as human beings love routines, or most of us love routines in the schedule. <coughs> I married one of those people. <coughs> um, setting, a, setting a time and a schedule. Not every, the Bible is not necessarily read better at five o'clock in the morning. And a lot of preachers will get up there or people will say, like, you gotta get up first thing in the morning and read your Bible. That works for some people. That works for us, that's what's worked for us. But I've got friends at lunch, that's their Bible time. Like they've got an hour for lunch, they're gonna go read the Bible during that hour and spend time in the Word. I've got people who are like, in the morning, don't talk to me, I can't retain anything, I need four cups of coffee before driving to work, and then so they're best at night. And so it, it is completely you and what works for you and your schedule, um, but you just have to set that time, you have to make that date. Um, when Jordan and I were courting and dating each other, um, that's what I asked your dad if I could court you, so I'm just throwing that out there. I didn't know we were courting. <laughs> yeah, we were. <laughs> you didn't know. Um, is you have to set time. Like, you know, Greg kind of talked about relationships and friends. If you want to build a relationship and, and get to know each other better, you got to set time and set dates um, to make that stuff happen. It doesn't just magically happen. It's work. Um, God doesn't say that it's going to be easy. He actually says the opposite of it. He says if you... Uh, it's going to be hard, but if you take my yoke upon you, which a yoke is for two oxen, um, and work it together, moving through life, it's a lot. It, it's easier that way. So, I'll let you kind of talk about. So, um, like like we said earlier, I love routine and I love structure. And so, during the school year, that's awesome. In the summer, not so much. <laughs> I like to sleep and. It's kind of hard for me after the first few weeks of summertime or Christmas break or whatever because we don't have that routine as much. Um, but during the school year, and we'll see once we get to a break um, how it works out during the break time, but during the school year we have a set routine and a schedule that we do every day. Um, and we, we call it our like priority time or our quality time. Um, same as like Bible study or your, you know, whatever. Quite time. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that we have done is to make sure that during that time we're working with our learning styles. And so like I am a visual learner and a kinesthetic learner. So I like to what see What does that it. mean? I'm getting it. Okay. <laughs> I like to see it and do it. <laughs> and Andrew is an auditory learner, so he likes to hear it. So during our, our quality time, our priority time, we tried to fit all of those components into it. Um, and this is our first year like doing it together. We've never done that before. Usually we would get up and we would do our own separate um, quiet times by ourselves. Um, With our own learning styles. Yes, yeah. but now we're doing it together and I think we've really been able to retain a lot more because now yeah. Like I said, we're hearing it, we're seeing it, and we're doing it. Um, so, and there's accountability there. Yes. Yeah. So we every morning when we get up, we go for a run. That's on him. Or a walk. He wants to do that. Something physical. I don't know why. <laughs> so we get up at five and we go for our run, and then we come back and we make our coffee. And while we're doing that, we listen to the reading for the day. So whatever it is that we're reading that day, we listen to it. So we both have the Bible app on our phone. And on the Bible app, you can, there's a button, you like literally just press play and it plays it, reads it out loud to you. So we listen to it during that time. We're getting out our Bible, we're getting out our stuff, we're packing our lunches, you know, making our coffee and we listen to it. <clears throat> and then we sit down and we read it and we read it out loud and we take turns. And that has been interesting. <laughs> I don't know if y'all have ever read in front of a first grade teacher as an adult. Like first grade teachers, their job is to teach people to read. <laughs> <coughs> Reading out loud is hard. Okay? And turning off the teacher is hard. It's really hard. It's really hard. I catch myself correctly. I'm like, oh, you forgot this word. Oh, no, that says eight. Oh, no. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we I take read really turns. good in my head, just slowly. <laughs> so we take turns reading. Um, I always read first, and it just always ends up happening that there's like three chapters, and so I read a chapter, he reads a chapter, and then I have to read another. One. It was on accident. So. Anyway, so we read it out loud, so then we're hearing it again, and then we're also seeing it. Like, we follow along with the other person as they're reading, too. Mm -hmm. And then um, the Bible plan that we do is called the Bible Recap. And so we follow along. It's a year-long study, and um, it takes you through the entire Bible in a year. And so every day, and it's chronological. And so every day when we do our reading, after that, there's a podcast that we listen to. <clears throat> Um, that recaps the day's reading. So it explains some of the stuff that's going on. It points out um, things that you may not have noticed. It gives you a little bit of historical background so that it makes more sense um, <clears throat> for what the time is and all that kind of stuff. So then we're listening again. Um, and then at the end, will you get that book? Yeah. At the end, we this is something new that we've gotten this year, but there's a, a study, study guide. guide that goes with it. So we there's questions in there that are different for each day. Um, so uh, let's see. For example, today was Genesis 32 through 34, and one of the questions says, what is significant about God changing Jacob's name? And so we talk about it, and then we write it down. And since I'm the kinesthetic person, I write. I, I do all the writing because when I write it, it helps me to remember it better. It also so, helps because you can't read my writing. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot better handwriting too, but I wasn't going to say that part. <laughs> so, I got um, the comedic relief. We got it. <laughs> so we have that, that schedule that we follow every day and um, <clears throat> we were just talking this morning that it's taking a little bit longer than we thought it was going to. And so now I'm rushed to get ready and get out the door. So we might try to um, wake up a little earlier. Yeah, wake up a little bit earlier so that I can actually get ready and not be doing my makeup in the car on the way to work and all those kind of things. But um, <clears throat> that's what's worked for us. And we found um, lots of different like tips and tricks along the way. Um, like I said, we get up at 5, which is, like, super early, and it's painful every single morning because I'm not a morning person. Andrew is, but I am not, so I It's listen. like the old joke. There's a, the morning people and the night, the night owls, and they marry each other. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just works out that way most of the time. Yeah. So, anyway, we get up really early, it seems like. Um, I'm yeah. sure there's people who get up earlier than we do, there, but yeah. it seems really early, but th one of the things that – I have found since I'm not a morning person is like going on our walk or run before we do our Bible study time has helped me tremendously because if before we would try to do it first and then go and I didn't retain any of it because I was like falling asleep as I was trying to read. So we do our, our exercise, our activity kind of get woken up before we start and that has really helped us or helped me. I don't know if it's helped you, but it's helped me. Um, <clears throat> And there are days, like on Saturday and Sunday, this is a new thing because we didn't used to do our, our um, quality time on Saturdays and Sundays, so we've just now added that this year. Mm -hmm. um, but on Saturdays, we just get up whenever we get up, but that's the first thing that we do. We make sure we you know, do our, our Bible study time before we move on to do anything else um, that day. And then on Sundays, now we're getting up earlier so that we can do that before we get ready for church. So. Right. Yes. That's been really good because then, since it's a year-long plan, we had days that we missed. And so Monday, we were doing three days worth of reading rather than just the one. And so every Monday, it was like, okay, we're going to read through this and check it off the list, but we didn't get anything out of it. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's helped us. That's one of those two-and-a-half-hour reading days. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. So, um, Let me kind of touch on that just a little bit. Okay. Um, so... You know, obviously we're married and we're, we're doing Bible study together. That, 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 that's not the case for everybody. You know, some people like to do that by themselves. Some people aren't married. Um, and that's totally fine. Uh, you just have to figure out what works for you. Um, you know, we, we've been doing Bible studies for a, a long time. And we've done a couple together. But this year, we, you know, our 
New Year's resolution or our goal for 2022 was to grow closer to each other and closer to God. And we figured we could do those things together. Um, so you just have to fit, like learning styles are hugely important. Um, you know, obviously she likes to write it and, and, and read it and write it and do stuff like that. Um, just figure out what works for you. There's a lot of trial and error um, with, with it. Um, there, there were times where all I would do is just listen. I would never read. And then I would, you know, all of a sudden I'm starting to think about other things. I'm like, oh shoot, I just missed an entire chapter of the Bible. Um, let me go read. I was like, I, I probably got it. And then I would go read it later. I'm like, I didn't even know that was there, even though I already listened to it. Um, so just kind of tweaking and figuring out what works for you. Um, you know, just like in any relationship, you don't, you're not going to be perfect um, at the beginning. No offense. Um, but you're perfect. Um, but, you know, that's, that's the trial and error relationship. You figure out what the other person likes. And that's one of the great things about reading the Bible is you'll find out what God loves and what he likes and what, what makes him sad and what makes him happy and all those things. So um, you're really just building that relationship with him um, to grow closer to him. And then on the, the time piece of it, <clears throat> so we go to bed at 9 o'clock every night. We don't have kids. Um, but that's, you know, if we're going to get our eight hours, we've got to go to bed at 9, wake up at 5. Um, and that's a big sacrifice because, you know, she's a night owl. She wants to be up and doing and, and having, you know, watching TV or doing whatever, you know, she wants to do. Um, but she's making that sacrifice to go to sleep at nine o'clock every day to make sure that we're recharging physically um, and then also spiritually every morning. Um, and then like sun church on Sundays, you know, classes at nine, we'd wake up at 815, rush real quick, jump in the truck and go. Uh, and now we're, you know, having to say, okay, well, no, we're going to wake up at 6.30 or 7 on a Sunday morning to make sure we're getting our quality time in before we start our day. Um, because for me personally, if I start in the Word that day, um, I'm a lot nicer throughout the day. Uh, if I wake up and I'm rushing to work or rushing to church, wherever I'm going and have not grounded myself and recharged myself for that day, um, I can be a little testy. Uh, she can probably testify to that. Um, but, you know, we, we both have jobs that are pretty stressful. Obviously, teaching, we know what teachers are having to go through. Uh, I work at a bank, and, you know, things can be stressful in, in there. And everyone has stresses in their life. Um, but setting a time every day to recharge yourself. Every night I go and plug my phone in because I need it for the next day. So every day I need to plug, my, plug myself into the Word because I need myself to be at my best every single day. So I need to be recharging myself, um, and it's daily. I don't plug my phone in every, once a week or one hour on Sundays. Uh, I plug my phone in every single day, so I need to make sure that me, because I think my relationship in, with Christ is more important than my phone. Uh, I don't always tr treat it like that, but it is. I mean, that's kind of the whole recharge concept there. So. So um, one thing that we as a couple do, and even before we were a couple, we made goals rather than like New Year's resolutions. We always had New Year's goals um, and goals for that year. And those are, you know, financial goals and spiritual goals and goals for our relationship and goals for our health. And, you know, we just set our goals every year on the first. Um, so one of our goals has been to read through the Bible. And so that's why this has become like more of a priority for us. Um, because I think we're both kind of goal oriented people. Mm -hmm. And if yeah. I have something on a list, like I want to check it off. Mm -hmm. So we keep those goals, <coughs> the list of those goals every year. And at the end of the year, we go back and we check off all the things that we accomplish from that list. And so, um, this last year, I was doing like four or five uh, days of the reading plan the last week of the year because I was like, I am going to check this off. So I got them all done, and it was revelation. So probably didn't get anything out of it because I was doing. Four it's already at a time. confusing enough, yeah. yeah. But you know, making the goal for us has helped us a lot, and we've just built it to become a habit. And it takes time to create a habit, but it takes, you know, you, I think it's the, the, um, like rule is that it takes 21 days to make a habit. I think that's right. So, you know, if it takes 21 days, then it's 21 days of you doing that every single day. It's 21 days that you make a commitment to do it. And then after that, it becomes a habit. So you don't have to think about it as much. It just is part of your day and it's just what you do. Um, <clears throat> so that's helped for us. And then we've also 
Andrew doesn't have to do this, but I'm a rule keeper and I'm like black and white most of the time. And so um, I make rules for myself. <laughs> and even though I'm the one that created the rule, I still have to follow it. So that's just who I am. So um, I have rules that I've set for myself so that it helps me to start my day the right way. So like, for example, when we, we both plug our phones in across the room um, so that we have to get out of bed to go turn off our alarm and that helps me tremendously to have to get up to go turn it off um, and then another rule that I've made for myself is that I have to do my Bible study time before I open any social media apps because all those red dots like <laughs> kill me and so I want all of them gone so that I can move on with my day but I open up my phone and I just, the first thing that I, well, I click on Pandora. We like listen to music during our run first. Yeah. But then after that, I don't allow myself to go open any social media apps until I've opened the Bible app. And so, um, like I said, it's a rule that I made for myself, but I still follow it because I just, that's just who I am. So yeah. anyway, so that's something that has helped too, just setting boundaries that, um, you know, you know, will help make you successful. So. Um, and those are thing, these are things that we, like we said, we don't have kids yet, um, but if it takes 21 days to make a habit, we want to make sure that we have this as part of our daily routine before we have kids so that that is like just part of who we are and part of what we do every day. And we know that it's going to get crazy and it's going to look a whole lot different, but at least it's something that we've done over time and we've done every day so that we know how important it is. And how much we need it because if we even though our schedule is going to change and our lives are going to change we still we know how important it is because we've lived it out mm -hmm. if that makes sense mm -hmm. so anyway do you have a question what, what was the name of the, the study guide and is the podcast connected to we will absolutely yes. get into that here yeah. in a minute yes yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll get, yes sir well, and this is not i don't know what the actual number is but i remember mm -hmm. hearing years ago it takes 30 days to make one and three days to break one. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, <clears throat> however many it takes to make is no, is, but yeah. the reality that it takes only three days to break it. To break it, and then you're, you're yes. back to. <clears throat> yes. Absolutely. I, go ahead. Oh, I just had another question. Not yeah. to put you guys on the spot. No, Come on. It's okay. But, but um, so, how do you deal with it? And I know you're fresh into this one, and you said just now, you know, last year you were, at the end of the year, you were trying to really. Get it so you can check off the box. Yes. <laughs> but I know one thing that I struggle with is this guilt feeling when something comes up, mm -hmm. you know, that's not part of the ordinary yeah. and throws me off. And then mm -hmm. I either have to make a choice to, to make it up or yeah. just not worry about it and just pick up where I left off yeah. and keep going. Yeah. yeah. Any. So yeah, like, so a great example would be yesterday. Was that what you were going to say? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yesterday, my dad and brother were in town. They're staying at the house. We got up at 6, and we went on a hunting. I did not get up at 6 on Saturday. Just yeah, but guys, we, we got up, and we had a hunt. We had a, you know, breakfast and hunting. We were going on this really cool guys Saturday. So we didn't get to do our quiet time at 5 o'clock or whenever we did in the morning. <clears throat> and then, you know, we had all that all day, and then processing deer, and then we had a birthday party out of town, and, going to, and then we came back, and we got home, and... I think I fell. I, I'm, I know I fell asleep in the car on the way home, and uh, we got home and we like looked at each other like we got to get our Bible study done, and so we we sacrificed sleep to make sure that we got into the Word that day. Yeah. Um, Jordan, I feel this is for you. Okay. Because I feel like it, I'm a night owl too, mm -hmm. so I feel like you're sacrificing more. Oh, well, thanks. Oh, that's a hundred percent correct. I'll take that. <laughs> up your solitude time at night <clears throat> yeah. and you're giving up your uh, you're forcing yourself out of bed in the morning mm -hmm. when it's against the way your brain works right <clears throat> and so what I want to hear is 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 how what what has been the benefit for you so and I want to hear from your heart yes okay so first like physiologically that's a big word <laughs> um, I am a night owl, like on the weekends, I want to stay up because I know I don't have to get up. But after one day or two days of getting up at five, I'm no longer a night owl. I do not want to stay up anymore. <laughs> so it, it has shifted. Um, but like on 
breaks where I'm not getting up to go to work, then I do stay up a lot later. But something that we've done from the beginning of our marriage is we always go to bed at the same time. So even if I do want to stay up or he wants to go to bed, you know, he like I might stay up watching TV and he like stays on the couch. He might fall asleep, but he stays on the couch and then we go to bed at the same time. Or or maybe it's a day where I'm really tired and I want to go to bed, but he wants to watch this game. He comes to bed too and he watches it in bed on the iPad. Mm-hmm. So I don't, we've just always done that. And so that's one thing that we we I think it has helped because we do it together, whatever it is, staying up or going to bed or, or whatever. So that has helped, but um, also being a teacher, like I don't really have the option of staying up late anymore <laughs> right. because it's just exhausting all right. the time. Um, so anyway, but this has been really, really good for me and for us because it didn't, we've, we've done this year long plan for three years, I think. Is this right. is the, the same th- exact this is the third time Bible reading plan. Well, it's the fourth year, but the first year we started in That's October. Right. Yeah, this is our third season. third trip through the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So before that, we did separate. Well, we did separate even last year, but before that, we were doing separate study plans. And like one of the plans I did was the book Seamless. I think the women's group has like gone through it. It's awesome, and right. that was one of the things that started for me. Um, the understanding of like what is going on how does this connect to each other what is this full story you know that goes through the whole bible and that that helped me a lot because at that point andrew i was getting up earlier than he was Mm -hmm. like we weren't getting up at the same time i was getting up first because i had to be at work first um and i was doing that before he even got out of bed and so that was I don't know. I think that kind of like changed the trajectory for me because it it just helped everything make so much more sense. Mm-hmm. And um, I've always like we grew up with our parents, both of us grew up with our parents, like doing a quiet time every day. And, you know, I remember my dad, um, I remember seeing him like at the kitchen table in the mornings before school when I was getting ready. And he always took us to school. And my mom um you know, she worked here. So she had like a later start than the rest of us, you know, having to get to school <coughs> early. But I remember that she would get up and she would, she had like this spot on the couch that she would always sit to do it. Um, and so, you know, we just both grew up with that kind of ingrained in us as being important. Um, but we, I think, didn't really take ownership of it as ours until later on. Um, and we both did studies, like we even did a study together in college. Um, but, yeah, so we kind of got to take ownership of it. And and with this schedule and, like, how we do it now, it feels like it's ours. Like, it's, yeah. it, I don't know. So one, anyway, one it's special cr- to us because it's ours. We've created it. We've built it to be what it is. So. Yeah. And that seamless study has kind of pro- propelled us into reading through the Bible because <laughs> I was not an Old Testament person. I, I grew up New Testament. I didn't want to. I didn't want to read the these and thous in the Old Testament. Uh, didn't make sense. I just want to read about Jesus and the Gospels. Like that was that was my passion. Um, and, and then after watching that, I her think get I studied s- Jeremiah. Like I read that, and then the the book that I had like chosen to study was Jeremiah. And I was like, this is so cool. You know, I was all geeking out about it. And yeah. Andrew's like. <laughs> but seeing her passion for the Old Testament, I was like, okay, let's try this. And we've absolutely loved it. And it's been life changing for us, for sure. Um, so, so yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So, so, like I was talking about our parents, and like we don't have kids yet, but we want to be that for our kids too. Like, we want, we want to leave a legacy. Like, I, I think that our parents have left a legacy in us because they've shown us what that looks like and they've modeled it for us. And so we want to do the same for our kids one day. And, and not just for our kids, but, I mean, for our friends and our family. Um, I mean, one really cool thing is, is you know, I, I won't go into all, all the details, but, m- you know, my dad had a falling out with faith and everything like that. And um, just watching us talk about how much we've loved this study, uh, he's doing it with us this year. Um, and he is up to date every day. He's posting comments in, in, in the app. 
Um, and we'll kind of expand into that. But you know, it's not just kids or your spouse. It's it's your friends. It's your family. I mean, people are watching in your 111 hours all the time. And so you want to be making an impact, whether you're talking to them about Jesus or they're just seeing you do something. So. And we have geeked out about it enough that like some people in our small group have done it too. Yeah. It's been fun. It's, it's good awesome. Talk about it with everybody. So. Um, so that kind of goes into what to study. So like I said, I mentioned um, Seamless. If you haven't done that, it's awesome. It's really, really, really good. Yeah. Um, and let's see, what else? We do the Bible recap is what it's called. Um, and you can find that study plan. If it's something that you're interested in, you can find it on the <coughs> Bible app. But then they also have a website. So if you aren't like an app type person, you can print out a list of all the reading. Um, and it has check boxes. So I love that. Um, <laughs> yeah. And when we say we, when we keep saying the Bible app, it's, it's you version is, is the company that's put that out. Life Church. Uh, we don't just push that one because my sister works there. We really like it. Um, and it's it's really cool. I mean, they've done a really, really good job. It's got over 500 million downloads um, since it first came out. It's got the Bible in multiple languages, multiple versions. It's got people reading it to you. Um, it's got and built it has in. tons of plans, not yeah. just the one that we do, yeah. but there's tons of them. There's three-day plans. There's 10-day plans. There's all kinds of plans, um, things yeah. for specific um like specific topics or specific books like there's all kinds of stuff like that yeah. on there too and you just go in and search like you know i'm feeling i'm struggling with envy and you bam 10 10 uh, different studies with scripture built in mm -hmm. commentaries and stuff just available for free at your fingertips about different versions i i uh, <coughs> we started that bible reading plan here at the church and we did the new we testament did, in we did four the weeks testament, we kind yeah of got through the Started the Old Testament and then COVID hit and all that kind of stuff. Right. I was using the New Century version. Oh, okay. And I just finished, so this is took me a while. Yeah. <laughs> but I just finished the Old Testament because we started the New Testament with New Century version. So here I'm back at the New Testament, so what am I going to do? Okay. So I decided I've never, I've read the message a lot, but I've okay. never actually mm -hmm. read, so I chose the, ver the message version mm -hmm. to start reading. So I think if you'll, at least for me, if I choose a different version to read through, mm -hmm. then it, there's a lot of different things that jump out. Yeah, <coughs> that's great. What's the one that I bought? I don't remember. Because you, you did that. You read a different version one year because I bought you that new Bible. Mm -hmm. I can't remember which one it was. No, that's, we have, we both have NIV Bibles, but... I bought us these like study Bibles with all these maps and pictures and they're like timelines in there. Awesome. <coughs> but they're that thick, so we don't take them anywhere. We just leave them at They our stay house. at the house. <laughs> yeah. Unless we get into a fight, then we bring them with us. What, <laughs> what version it is, but anyway. So and then yeah, one, one other thing before we talk about resources. Um, <clears throat> the the lady that recaps the whole Bible on this podcast, one thing that she says, um, quite frequently, and I feel like it's really, really important, is that you need to use scripture to interpret scripture. So if it's talking about, you know, something that doesn't really make sense, or you're like, wow, that is really weird, you need to use scripture to interpret scripture. So if it's something that goes against what the rest of scripture says, that means that it's probably like describing a situation rather than um, prescribing. Like, this is something that it's describing to you, but that doesn't mean that that's the right way to do it. Right. Because if you look at all of the rest of scripture, you know, you can see like, thou shall not murder. But today we read about um, Simeon and Levi killing all the men of Shechem. So we know like that was just describing a situation, it wasn't saying that you go out and kill everybody. <laughs> Duh. But, you know, like, you you have to use it to interpret each other because, um, you know, people, sometimes I think if we don't spend our own time in the Word, we can just listen to what other people say and accept it as Scripture. But unless we actually read it and study it for ourselves, we don't really know if that's what it's saying or if that's just one person's interpretation or feelings about it. So. Yeah. I feel like that's important. Yeah. And that's something that we, we feel a lot more confident in now that we've read the whole Bible. Like when we see something or we hear something, you know, in a sermon or on a podcast or like on the Christian radio that they talk about, we can kind of 
um, like filter it through our own lens of what we know yeah. rather than just what this person is telling us. Yeah. So, yeah. Jesus is in the Old Testament, by the way. I, I found him a couple times. It's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> so just being able to know the full, you know, God had a plan from the beginning, from Adam and Eve to the time Jesus came. I mean, you just see everything that had to happen. I mean, the gift of life and everything that's going on and just how it's recorded, it's, it's beautiful. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, go read the, Bible, the whole Bible starting right now. Um, figure yeah, out what works for you. Two and a half hours a day, do it in a month. Exactly. Check it out. Um, so th- there's other resources out there. So the, the Bible recap, that's what we're studying. So we're super passionate about that. That's why we've, we've said it a bunch of times. But you don't have to do that. You do what works for you. Um, that version Bible app, they've got tons of stuff on there. One of the really cool things that we like, and I kind of mentioned it earlier, is you can like friend request each other on there and like do Bible studies together. It's like my dad lives in Fort Worth, but he's on the same study that we are. And so we so can post comments. comments. Yeah, we can see that he's, we can keep uh, tabs on him because it has a little checkbox that he's done it for that day. And then we can post comments to each other and just hold each other accountable because, you know, you know we obviously we can sit at the same kitchen table and do our study together. But if you and your friend or you and whomever wanted to do something together, you've got that built-in accountability. Yep. Um, and they have this thing called streaks, which is really cool for the kids. Apparently in Snapchat streaks is a thing. I don't, I don't really use Snapchat, but... You can have, keep your streak alive in the app as long as you open it up that day. And it, like, on the top tells you how many days you've been in it in a row. It um, crushes me when I forget. My sister didn't yell at, like, she, my sister didn't yell at, like, 500 or something crazy. So she wins in our family. She cheats, though. Well, <laughs> she, like, that's, not, that's not a lie. That's true. His sister works at Uversion. So anytime his other sister, Danielle, would, like, open, she would, like, open the app at, like, 1201. The and next day. So it didn't count it as opening it for the day. So she'd just message her, hey, can you fix my streak? <laughs> that is cheating. And she did. It was cool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then we, we talked about that seamless study. The, <clears throat> the church also has a resource called Right Now Media, um, and it's got Bible studies. It's got kid television shows if you want your kids to watch something better than Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, you know, with built in Christian, you know, <clears throat> morals and stuff like that. I think it has VeggieTales on it. That's what I grew up on. I freaking. Is, is there VeggieTales? I tales? cotton pick and love VeggieTales. Yeah. yeah. VeggieTales is still awesome. Sing this I can song. still sing the song, <laughs> just not very well. Um, we run out of time, but yeah. so those are some really some great resources. Project. Tap into them. Uh, yeah, the the Bible Project is another one. It's also built into the Bible Recap. But the Bible Project, they do videos on specific topics. They do videos on the Bible where somebody's drawing it out while he's explaining what's going on. So if you're very artistic minded, it's really really cool. Um, I'm not, but or I still think it's really cool. It. Yeah. I do. Yeah. It helps a lot. And then it's it's really, really cool resource. If if you don't have the right now media, just email Beth at jscc.org um, and they can get you and she can get she or whomever can get you hooked up with that login there. Um, but tons of great resources out there. Um, finding stuff that just works. Um, and um, anything you want to add before I hit that last point? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, well oh, thank you. Yes. So this is, this is like just what works for us. And so, you know, we just wanted to share what works for us and um, what we have found through years of trial and error and failure that, you know, has, has helped us be successful. Um, and we hope that some of the tips or things that we've shared today help you. Um, but it's not because we're experts. Like, we're not right. here because we're experts because nope. we're definitely not experts. But, you know, it's just something that we found that works for us, and so we wanted to share it with you. Hopefully yeah. it yep. Thank you. Uh, and just kind of bringing it all back to the 111. So we t- this class and just talk, recharging ourselves, you know, kind of use the old cliche, you can't pour from an empty glass. So every day you have to fill up that, gla- that glass. Every day you plug your phone in, every day you got to plug yourself in and get recharged in the Word. And whatever your recharging looks like, your quality time, um, just make sure that you're doing that because you have 111 hours every week where people are watching you, where you're having conversations, where things are happening. Um, and we want to be able to use that time to impact the kingdom. But if you're burnt out or exhausted or on low battery, whatever it is, uh, it makes those things a lot harder. And a lot of times, like I said, you know, I'm not as nice of a person if I haven't recharged that day. Um, people are watching. They, you know, they, they, the, the Christians were first called Christians because of people saw how they were acting. They didn't call themselves Christians. So... You, you know, you're out there in the community and people are seeing you and, um, yeah, use your one 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 to better the kingdom and get recharged. So you want to close this? Go pray with me. 
Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for the time that you have given us together. I pray that um, the words that you have placed on our hearts will um, impact your kingdom. And I pray that through this time today that um, we can all grow closer to you and we can um, make our focus and our priority each day to um, better your kingdom and to be intentional with the time that we have. Um, I pray for us as we go forth that you will bless us and bless our worship time and bless our week. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.